Hello horror fans and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos, your compendium for all things horror fiction and fandom because damn it, we just love some spooky stuff. What's going on guys, as per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch and today we're going to be doing things a little different. Hold on to your hats because we've got a brand new series and it starts right here. The Monster Files, a top five list where we peel back the layers of horror cinema and knock up a showreel of the most iconic and monstrous cinematic killers that this terrifying world has to offer. Today, we're starting off big with the top five scariest Leatherface kills. Roll the clip. Toby Hooper's 1974 masterpiece, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, gave birth to one of horror's seminal slashers, Jedediah Sawyer, aka Leatherface. The deeply disturbed and almost childlike chainsaw wielding killer tucked away deep in the boonies of rural Texas, frolicking around and wearing people's skin on his face. Well, when you say it like that, it's almost sweet. Right? Leatherface, although loosely, was based on the notorious necrophile killer Ed Gain, a murderer who exhumed over 20 corpses to fulfill his twisted propensity for flesh. This shocking crime germinated in our cultural psyche, spawning characters such as Hitchcock, Norman Bates, Buffalo Bill from The Science of the Lambs, and of course, Leatherface. Let's take a look at his greatest hits, shall we? Before we do that though, if you're a fan of this new series, let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. Who else should we cover? We've already got Michael Myers in the pipeline, so stay tuned. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell so you can stay up to date with your latest and greatest uploads. On with the show. Kicking off at number five, Franklin, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Here's something, stop, stop. I'm not gonna lie, Franklin, was a jerk, and in Toby Hooper's 1974 original, we as viewers were just waiting for him to meet his demise. Or was that just me? Hey, he was loud, obnoxious, he was ruining the trip for everyone else, and that's not even including the looming threat of a chainsaw killer. He was whiny, and he made some absolutely terrible decisions that led to the deaths of pretty much everyone involved. Also, Franklin was absolutely oblivious to how much danger they were all actually in. So yeah, he was pretty easy pickings for Leatherface. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this death scene is visceral in the sense that it's incredibly straightforward. Leatherface appears out of nowhere, chainsaw starts buzzing, and Franklin dies. We don't actually see any of the gore or the incredible special effects that the indie film is synonymous for, but that's what makes it so great. Our own minds are left to fill in the gaps, and it all happens so deftly. It highlighted the fact that although Leatherface is slow, laborious, and in actual fact kind of stupid, he's still incredibly capable of pulling off a stealthy takedown, which made him that much more terrifying. Coming in at number four, Morgan, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2003. Uh. I don't know. I'm still undecided as to whether I'm a fan of the recent remakes. I mean, by the time number three in the series came out, things could only get better, I guess. But the one bonus they do have is some absolutely insane Leatherface kills. In the 2003 remake of the original, Morgan filled the same role as Franklin, a bit of a jerk, really, who initially appeared as comic relief for the otherwise bleak tone of the movie. Well, his jokes quickly started to grate on us, and that only meant one thing. He's gonna get chainsawed. But of course, director Marcus Nilsson had to tug on our heartstrings because despite Morgan being an ass, he ultimately dies a hero in an attempt to protect our final girl, Erin. And the whole thing is emotionally confusing. Still, Leatherface is at the top of his game and we get a subtle nod to the meat hook scene of the 1974 original. And then Leatherface proceeds to chainsaw Morgan in half from the groin up. Deep breath, horror fans. I know you will felt the same way. Next up at number three, Hartman, Texas Chainsaw 3D, 2013. A 
confusing scene all around, really, for an otherwise confused movie, but one of the most insane Leatherface kills in the entire franchise. Throughout the events of 2013's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, we learn that the local mayor, Burt Hartman, is just as hell-bent on killing people as our boy Leatherface. In a bid to eliminate the cannibalistic Sawyer family and stamp out their kind from Texas, himself and a few angry cronies firebomb their rural home and were declared heroes in the town of Newt. Fast forward a few decades and, well, it turns out that the final girl, Heather, is actually the long lost cousin of Leatherface himself, and the film quickly turns into a confusing and strange barrage of chainsaw family bonding. And the final showdown takes place in none other than an actual slaughterhouse. Ironic, right? Well, forget about the corny dialogue and the ham fisted exposition because we're ultimately rewarded with this. <laughs> Leatherface bringing the pain via hand dismemberment and a meat grinder. A winning combination as far as Leatherface is concerned. Swinging in at number two, Buzz and Rick, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, 1986. <laughs> and from the off, we all knew where this one was going. Now, I'm actually quite a big fan of the 1986 sequel. Yeah, it's a bit camp, a bit over the top, lacking of that bleak visceral tone that the 1974 classic captured. But as far as 80s horror flicks go, it's a damn good movie. Also, this is the only point in the franchise where Leatherface actually dies, intended to be Toby Hooper's graceful departure from the character. But thankfully for us, his story didn't end there. The road to nowhere scene begins with Buzz and Rick, two high school seniors who, you guessed it, are absolute jerks. They're wearing goofy x-ray glasses, they're loud, obnoxious, and they're prank calling the local radio DJ, Stretch, who turns out is the unwitting love interest of Leatherface himself. Now, this is an absolutely incredible opening sequence, highlighting special effects legend Tom Savini at the top of his game, with a gut-wrenching display of chainsaw scalping. Awesome stuff. And finally, at our number one spot, Pam, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. And jeez, this scene is literally a horror work of art. Start to finish, the meat hook scene is cemented firmly in iconic horror cinema. And if you haven't seen it, you really should. Although Pam's final fate is left ambiguous, with only Sally ultimately escaping from Leatherface, it's safe to say that the chainsaw-wielding killer leaves the rest to our imagination. Even though we as an audience never actually see the hook pierce through her skin, we feel every agonizing moment, and this scene still holds up the cringe factor even 40 years later. It's our first full introduction to Leatherface and a taste of the overwhelming sense of dread that he layers throughout the film's duration. Moments before, Pam's boyfriend Kirk received the full force of a sledgehammer, and so Pam must bear witness to Leatherface handling his kill. The thing that makes this scene so goddamn bleak is the complete and utter lack of hope. We're in Leatherface's world now, there's no fighting back, you either run or you die. Well, there we have it, our first feature on the Monster Files, the one and only Leatherface. Unfortunately, folks, that's all we've got time for in today's video. I sincerely hope you'll be a fan of this new series. Let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. It's been a pleasure making this video for you all. If you'd like to stay updated with your daily dose of horror, be a deer and ding that subscribe bell. As always, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching the Monster Files on top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.